Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Now, those of you who are regular viewers, or if you've even just been following the Digital Electronics um, playlist videos, uh, you'll probably have spotted that an awful lot of my videos I make use of um, 74 LS series of, of chips. Uh, now, they're mostly um, not in, man in production anymore. Uh, they've been superseded by better things um, and what you tend to get on this channel is me looking in my uh, box of chips that I've been amassing since the 1980s and I, and I tend to, to play with them and certainly the kind of stuff I do with them on the breadboard whether you've got the latest um, super fast version or whether you've got the ancient TTL version doesn't matter it has the same function um, however somebody made a comment a couple of videos back that I'd talked about the LS um, particular chip but then the one I used was the HC variant and they were quite correct they are very different um, they're also in some ways uh, still similar but uh, anyway that's um, uh, doesn't matter too much but the point is there are uh, different families of chip and I just want to uh, have a look at some of the differences today between uh, TTL and CMOS so let's go straight to the bench and take a look Okay, quite a lot going on here, and I'm aware I've not shown you a circuit diagram. All will be revealed, don't worry. Uh, essentially what I'm trying to do here is um, look how uh, various types of integrated circuit respond um, to changes in voltage. And to do that I'm going to try and uh, be as scientific as you ever can be on a breadboard with just a, just a few hobbyist instruments. But what we've got is supply voltage coming in. Got a 7805 regulator here set up uh, with the recommended two capacitors uh, on, on the input. That's 0.33 microfarad, that's uh, 0.1 microfarad across the output. And that voltage is fed onto the, the bus, um, on the breadboard bus lines here. Uh, currently, uh, the output voltage is just hovering at about 4.43, something like that. Um, so that's hopefully to give you some kind of um, realistic response to. Uh, to voltage as an actual circuit board. Right, um, so first chip we're going to look at is the 74LS00, that's a quad NAND gate. Here's, um, here's a NAND gate and it's associated truth table. Now, uh, if the inputs of a NAND gate are both high, or if one of them one of them is high, then the output will be low. And that's currently what's happening here, there's not much to see, but um, both I've got both inputs to that gate tied high through 10k resistors there uh, everything else on here all the other gate inputs i've got them uh, also tied high to keep the noise down uh, and the output through a current limiting resistor is to that led there which is currently not lit so here i've got a potential divider across the supply rail and this little yellow jumper is going to i'm going to use that now to slowly reduce the voltage uh, until one one of the legs of the gate uh, goes low and the chip recognises that and then that LED should light. So the voltage you can see there now is going to be the voltage across the output of the potential divider. So I'll turn that down slowly and this should at some point try and go nice and gently. If that's changing numbers confusing you just watch the bar graph. Um, slowly but surely I'm going to reduce it and eventually I'm expecting the LED to light hopefully. And there she goes, yep, just back that off again, so I can see lit there. So that's about 1.16 volts, so at 1.16 volts um, that uh, 74LS00 considers uh, that input uh, now to be to be low, um, and sometimes it's easy to think of low, if I take it down to zero obviously it still is lit um, but if I start going back up now that's completely extinguished at about about 1.3 so just get it to light there yeah so it's about 1.18 something like that is the threshold um, okay so that is um, a 74LS00 and we'll have a look at um, how these chips uh, actually operate a little bit later on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to this next chip. Now this is a 4011 which is a 4000 series uh, CMOS quad NAND gate. So we've got the same um, 
sort of gates uh, but this time it's a different uh, slightly more modern chip so let's now again I've got both uh, inputs on that gate uh, tied high through 10k resistors and I've got a current limiting resistor here for that LED so let's um, hop onto one of those legs that was already low let's turn the potential divider back to supply rail and let's connect there so currently both inputs are high so the output is low remember we had about it was about 1.18 wasn't it for the um, 74ls so let's see what happens as we come down on a CMOS chip and we're looking for that LED to light now so I'm turning the pot as slowly as I can realistically and there we go very abrupt but let's just go back to it there so that's 2.2 volts so that's that's um, more than a volt difference uh, and that, that chip considers that input to be low at about well, 2.19 2.2 something like that so there's quite a bit of difference there between um, between CMOS and uh, and the TTL chip of the 74 LS um, and I think it's just important to bear this in mind because obviously uh, if you're going to make, get these chips working together just be aware that logic low and high doesn't occur at exactly the same level for these different sorts of chips so that just needs to be a consideration okay so those are the two um, actual chips now what I've got here is I've actually got a NAND gate made from transistors and I've got a NAND gate made from MOSFETs so let's just um, purely for a bit of fun see um, how exactly this works so again got both inputs of the NAND gate tied high through 10k resistors so I need a slightly longer jumper here so I'm going to pop that in there I'm going to pop that on the output of the potential divider exactly as before and now it's this LED we're looking for so we'll start to wind that voltage down again you can see it being displayed on the meter as we drop down and so this is we're back onto two transistors here so let's just see what we get um, hoping this is going to work looking for the LED to light and there we have it just lighting at about 0.6 volts hopefully you can see that so here's the circuit I'm using it's two transistors and this is a common circuit for a two transistor NAND gate okay let's um, and if I just take that fully down to zero it doesn't really light anymore so that goes off at about 0.7 volts and it's on by 0.6 volts so that's the transistor one I'll turn that potentiometer back up and finally here we've got um, a NAND gate made from FETs sorry from MOSFETs uh, so here's the circuit diagram for that it uh, consists of three MOSFETs again got both inputs tied high so the output should be low so let's pop the jumper onto one of the inputs that little red LED there is the one that we're now looking at so remember we had about 0 0.6 0 0.7 volts for the transistor one let's see what we get for for MOSFETs and actually it's beginning to light there at about 2.5 there she goes it's fully lit by about 1.7 but um, definitely starts coming on there so uh, that actually um, agrees with what we were seeing with the two um, the two different chips here the TTL and the CMOS um, we've got TTL logic here and we've got CMOS logic here so clearly CMOS chips have got um, a higher voltage when it comes to the recognizing what's considered to be a, a logical low signal okay I um, hope that makes some sense. Uh, let's now uh, see if we can just uh, try and summarise what's been going on here on the bench. Let's bring together then some of the things we've been talking about on the bench. So one of the chips I've been using is the 74LS00, the quad NAND gate. And let's just look at what that numbering actually means. So SN is the manufacturer. Uh, I don't think we need uh, letters to work out in this case that it's Texas Instruments 
Uh, S74 is the spec series, as I'm going to call it. You can, for instance, get a 54XX00, um, um, the military spec version. It's got a wider temperature range amongst uh, other things. Uh, LS stands for low power shotty. Come back to that in a moment. 00, zero is the actual IC function. In the case of this chip, it's a quad NAND gate. And N is the case style. So we'll open our shotty. Well, um, that is a little snippet of a circuit diagram. I don't think that is actually a, a, a NAND gate. I think that's a NOR gate. Uh, it doesn't matter. What you can see here is, though, is there are numerous uh, shotty diodes on there. Shotty diodes are usually uh, capable of operating on a much higher frequency than conventional diodes. And this, of course, is what's called transistor, transistor logic. Uh, pretty much obsolete these days um, and the clues in the name uh, lots of transistors in there okay now there is another um, well there's more than one there's several different um, letter number in um, conventions you can come across I only have uh, one chip with the other sort on so I'm just going to use that as an example we didn't use it today but hopefully you can see on there it's not um, I did my best to get a picture of it that's the SN 74HC595. So yet again SN and 74 are the manufacturer and the spec series. HD, HC stands for high speed CMOS. I'll come back to that in a mo. And again 595 is the IC function, N is the case style. In the case of this chip a 595 is an 8-bit shift register which we haven't been using today of course. Now here's um, a little snippet of a CMOS circuit diagram this is not the shift register and the clues in the name CMOS complementary metal oxide semiconductor and the thing to take note of there is that, that for the most part the, um, the uh, MOSFETs which you can see there best examples on the on the left are the two inputs are uh, you've got an N channel and a P channel that's denoted by the direction of the arrow uh, and you've got them working in pairs or complementary um, now this has got lots of advantages, one of which is uh, much lower power consumption, but it's also um, a lot less prone to, uh, to noise. Um, there's lots of good reasons why uh, you might want CMOS instead of TTL. It's apparently much easier to fabricate uh, MOSFETs on, uh, on a substrate than it is transistors, but that's well beyond uh, my understanding. So those um, hopefully I'll give you some idea of what these uh, long numbers mean. Um, now there's lots of different um, sorts of um, uh, chips as I said there's the LS and the HC on here but there are others so I would encourage you to perhaps um, uh, type that into Google or have a look at some manufacturers spec sheets but there's just one more thing I want to cover now the first chip we used today was the 74 LS00 and I've put XX in there because if that if we had a 74 HC OO, the arrangement of the gates on the chip would still be the same. So effectively, it'd be a, a plug-in replacement. Um, so that's um, a quite handy feature of the, the 74 series. Um, just bear in mind the other chip I used today, which was the 4011, um, which is a CMOS chip. Um, just note that although the two left-hand gates are pin compatible. The two right hand gates are reversed so you cannot use that as a plug-in replacement despite the fact um, it's a 14 pin dill package exactly the same way so if you are using these things just just bear that in mind and go carefully always get the data sheet and check and so to the voltage measurements that I took while we were uh, working away there on the bench here's a, a list and as ever with lists it's um, a little bit meaningless without a bit of thought and concentration so let's just put those numbers onto a bar graph here's a 0 to 5 volt um, uh, graph and the transistor voltage uh, was there just above uh, 1 volt uh, the CMOS voltage just above 2 volts and for completeness sake let's pop on the uh, transistors gate that I made from discrete components and also the MOSFETs and you can see they um, are both distinctly different and hopefully distinctly different in the in the right sense because the 4011 um, is a, a CMOS device whereas the LS00 is a transistor device. 
Um, so you need to be careful there when you're getting these devices working together. And if you look at the data sheet for the 74LS00, uh, it quotes 2 volts as being the voltage minimum voltage by which the LS00 would consider the input to, have, to be high. And as you can see, that's actually um, very close to the result we got for the for the CMOS. So we're getting those two chips working together potentially would give you an issue. So it's just worth bearing that in mind. Now, arguably, the 74LS00 is more obsolete than the 4011, and they're both uh, relatively old devices. Uh, but hopefully, you can see there is um, a significant difference there, which you might need to be aware of if you find yourself um, with problems on a circuit that you've built. And I think the other thing that's worth mentioning as well is I've not actually put a voltage on for the um, for the CMOS chip because um, the data sheet for the 4011 says the supply voltage can be up to 20 volts, whereas the supply voltage for the uh, TTL chip, the LS00, uh, is between 4.5 and 5.5. So um, the LS devices requires a very um, specific uh, supply whereas the CMOS device has got a much more wider range of, of supply voltage that it will to tolerate. Okay well there you have a bit of a, an exploration of TTL and CMOS logic chips so I hope that's uh, been enlightening. I've certainly enjoyed uh, a few experiments on the breadboard and I think uh, one thing that's sometimes easy to do is to fall into the trap of thinking that logic 0 is 0 and logic 1 is 5 volts and hopefully what we've proved today is that depends on the chip family and it certainly isn't 0. Um, it may be approaching the supply voltage but it certainly isn't 5 volts either. So I've got um, probably a couple of hundred old LS series TTL chips that I tend to just play with. Um, if you've got the latest CMOS versions the, the function is the same but the way they do the work uh, is quite different and hopefully we've seen that as well today. Thanks very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Doing that allows uh, the YouTube algorithm to uh, show more people my videos and that really helps. Uh, thanks very much and look forward to seeing you on the next video.